Let's get down to business. Race drivers, this is Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show, straight off the back again of a race weekend. Yo, we're never home. We're never in the office right now. Um, it was Sam Vort this time, and we were with the F2s and F3s and F1s, um, and it was amazing, by the way. Orange Army, full respect. You made the atmosphere probably the best race I've ever been to. I didn't go to, go to it last year, so I missed out. But this year, wow. They were everywhere. I mean, Spa was amazing, Orange Army. Austria, Red Bull Ring, amazing, Orange Army. But this one, this took the biscuit. They were everywhere and uh, so knowledgeable. They knew everybody, knew the drivers, getting the drivers in and out because everybody wants an autograph. Everybody wants a photo, obviously. Getting them in and out of the track was a task in itself. Uh, but it was great. Music was booming. And uh, wow, what a weekend. Going off to Monza next, which uh, then it will everything will turn red. <laughs> because obviously that's the Tifosi, it's got the Ferrari fans, so be a big weekend for Oli Behrman, actually, because it's the championship final for Nali, and he's a Ferrari driver, so that'd be cool for him to experience. Um, we didn't have a great weekend, by the way. The last video I did, amazing weekend. I knew it wouldn't last. We got two podiums with both drivers this time, not really good. One didn't get his lap in qualifying, the other one chose the wrong tyres in in the race and then we got the safety car blah 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 either way didn't come away with many points but that's the way it is you've got to remember the pack of cards from the last one if you pull an ace or a two we got a few twos this time so yeah we got to stay deep uh stay faithful to the process and keep going and hopefully things turn out different next time but for today and for you beautiful people we're going to talk business the, I'm going to keep it short, but I'm going to keep it very direct because there's a term or a way of describing what we do in this sport that will bring it home and just hopefully remind you of what this is all about and how to win in motorsport. And my term or my belief is, and I've been told this by top people in F1, right, that motorsport is nothing but a business that's disguised as a sport. Now, you as a race driver or a parent of a race driver might look at the sport and think, you know, this is amazing. It's like it's like tennis. It's like football. We're going to approach it the same way. The player is going to turn up, driver is going to turn up and per personally perform at their best, do all they can, eat well, sleep well, train well, get all the knowledge they can, compete, and they'll make it if they're good enough. But it doesn't work like that. There's far too many drivers, some that I've worked with, that have got all the talent they need, all the speed that they need to get to Formula One and the work ethic, but they don't get there. They get close. They get to the bit where you're in the queuing and the waiting room to get to F1. But if the seats don't open up, if that driver as an individual doesn't really make business sense, you know, they might not even be from the right country. Now, this is not being racist. This is just saying we need, because we've got certain sponsors from certain companies, oh, sorry, we got certain sponsors from certain countries. This is what a race team says. We need a driver that's from the same country to keep that sponsor involved. Or there will be something else that is business related. And it, it really forces them to choose certain drivers. And you see it in F1 a lot, right? You see it in the top end of the sport. But as you work your way down the sport, F2, F3, F4, and all the other championships, Business is taking place there just as much. It's like, right, the team is going to offer you a drive, but you've got to pay them. You've got to pay them that covers the costs of transporting the car, of you know, with their expertise. They're going to prep the car. They're going to do everything possible to help you win. All you've got to do is turn up and drive, and that is a service. So they're going to charge for it. This is a business transaction. You pay them. They run it all. They carry on and stay in business. They're, in, they're competing, so they're feeding that monster inside as well. It's a cool way to earn money, right? If you're a race owner, race team owner, it's like, I run this team, people pay, and we compete. So that's a business transaction. So that's one level of it. The next level is, right, I'm a driver. How the hell am I going to get this money? 
Have I got to go to the bank of mom and dad? If so, I've got to sell to them on why this is a good idea. Why are they going to spend all my inheritance on my racing? So I've got to sell it. I've got to prove to them that it's worth doing. That's if you go in that route. If you go into outsiders to pay for your racing, it's like, right, I've got to show them how it's valuable to them. I'm going to look at a company. I'm going to see what they're actually advertising and doing at the minute. I can see their challenges. I can go and meet them and talk about their business challenges. And then I can see if my motorsport can answer some of them problems that they have can give them what they want, can find more clients for them. And if I do that and I price it correctly, I offer them a service that can be the answer to their dreams or their problems, then I can sell it to them. They buy it. I spend that money on my racing. It's a business transaction. If you're a club racer and you think, right, I've got to hold down three jobs in order to pay for my own racing because, you know, it's 20K. I know I can raise that just by washing cars and doing anything I can. I can raise 20 grand a year to go racing. If you're in that kind of situation, it's like, right, it's still business. I'm going to go and work for this job, this person, this company. I'm, I'm going to bring my expertise and my time. And I'm going to do a job for them. They're going to pay me business transaction. I spend the money on racing. All too many drivers are seeing it as a sport, falling in love with it, think that the companies should just pay for their racing because they want it so much. They want to be this best race driver. They, you come and join my journey. They don't care. They're too busy paying their mortgage. They're too As a company, they're too busy paying the payroll. They've got 30 members of staff that they must make sure that they pay each month. Times are tough. You coming along as a race driver saying, this is what I want. This is my height. These are my hobbies. Um, this is my uh, what I want to get out of racing. Do you fancy sponsoring? I'll give you some coverage on the side of the car. They ain't got time for that. They're not going to want to listen to it. And you're one of hundreds of people that are just trying to extract money from them when they have to close out all that noise. And you are noise when you approach them, by the way. They have to close all that out. Focus on profit, making this business survive because without money, the business dies and they won't be able to pay their staff and they won't sleep at night. They'll fail. So you really have to make sure that when you're going to see a sponsor, when you're going to sell something, you're going there thinking about them first. You use your racing as a vehicle to answer their problems. All you've got to do as an entrepreneur, a race entrepreneur, is find out what their problems are, look at the sport and see how it can offer them solutions, price it correctly, sell it. If you approach it that way, you listen to them first, right? Always listen to the company's problems first and just seeing if you can answer them or help them out if you can price it. If you approach it that way, your success rate is going to go through the roof. Just please, as a driver, don't go to a company saying I'm a racing driver and I, I need some kind of help or back in because it's not going to wash. You might get one out of every 500 say yes, but why do you want to go for them odds? You're wasting your time. You might as well talk the business, talk to them on a business level, look in their eyes, say or ask them, what is it that you need right now? What's the company struggling with? What's your goals for 2023 or the year after? All right, perfect. I've got them. I'm going to come away. I'm going to see how motorsport as a sport, it might not even be your car or your championship that you're selling. You might be selling something else. You could pin them to a championship title sponsor and take the commission from that. But you go into the motorsport world and you say, right, I've got Oscorp. I can see that they really have a lot of products coming out. And they've got one they particularly want to push to the kind of people that watch motorsport. Right. I've got this now. If I can find out how to get them out there on different race teams, maybe sell that as a package. You're the broker, the sponsorship broker. You earn money, you go racing, or at least it contributes to your racing. You've really got to think on this level, everybody, if you want to survive in the sport or get ahead. And that's for everybody, even if they've got money. If you've got three million in the account, and you're shooting for F1. Okay, that gets you like three years. And you think, right, I've got to get three years in the junior categories and I've got to win. Believe me, 
even with a driver program that's paying for some of the budget for you. They don't pay for all of it, just some of it. Some, sometimes they don't pay for any of it. You've still got to make sense to them why they should make you promote you through the sport. Like an example is if you're fast and you're an American now for F1, it's a gold mine. Every team wants an American. It's owned by Americans. The sport's growing in America now, so they want an American driver. Not all the teams, but a lot of the teams do. There's a value there. So if they've got two drivers at a similar speed, one's from America, one's from a country that's not really that valuable to the sport or to the team or to the sponsors of the team, they'll choose the American. And it goes, it, it just happens like this. It's not anybody being biased towards a country. It's business. They need to survive. And a driver is quite important. I want you to think on this level. No matter what championship or level you are at right now, I want you to businessify it up. How can I provide? How many times have I said this, people? I've been listening to my videos for so long. How can I provide, say it with me, more value to people? Because if I do that, I will get mine. That's the way you've got to see it. And it might take years to figure this out. You're going to try things. You're going to put packages together. You're going to go to companies. You're going to get thrown out. But if you really commit and go for this and, and approach it from this level, you're not only going to be a great driver or you're going to have the money to drive. You'll be a great manager afterwards. Take this on board. It's business first, disguised as a sport. Approach that way. Offer value to people. They'll help you out and they'll join your mission. Good luck. Let us know how you get on. If you have any questions, put it down. I'll make a video on it probably. See you next time.